I charged my last available credit on my last credit card. I had no money. Basically telling them, I'm not going to stop following up with you unless you tell me to stop. And you are going to be relieved when you get that first stop. <laughs> Because then that's one less person to chase. Guys, what's up? It's Emily and welcome back or to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, we're doing some more anti MLM content today. So if this is your thing, this is what you like to watch, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It would mean so, so much to me because we just hit 12,200 here on my channel. It doesn't sound like a lot and I've kind of been stuck at that 12,000 number for a minute, but that's just because I hadn't been consistent in recent times. And now that I am back here on my channel, uploading videos, it feels nice to finally get some momentum going. The beverage of the day while we record this video is a Mickey D's DC. If you know, you know that crisp is unlike any other. And it's 10 a.m. while I'm filming this right now. And it's kind of early for me. I usually normally don't film this early. My management maintenance is coming around to like switch out the air filters today. Of course they're doing it this week and of course it's the day I'm filming, of course. And my anxiety just cannot deal with me recording and them coming and pounding on the door saying they gotta come in here while I'm filming and got all this going. My anxiety cannot. So I got up pretty early and got everything situated to film. That way I don't gotta deal with all that. I love talking to you guys more over on my socials at Emily J. Fine. So if y'all wanna keep up with me um, outside of YouTube, it's at Emily J. Fine. I would love to chat with you guys over there as well. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into the video. Okay, so today, um, I wanted to, hi Cindy, <laughs> um, I wanted to share with you guys what I do with my follow-up system. First, I wanted to make sure that everybody knows that I'm cold. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> my air always turns on and it's right above my, uh, my desk and it makes me so cold. Okay, I want everybody to know that everybody is going to have a different uh, follow-up system. Um, when I started, it was totally different. I didn't have any money to invest. Hey, Debbie. Um, I had nobody money to invest at all. I was just sharing with a consultant today that when I joined, if you don't know this, I charged my last available credit on my last credit card. I had no money. Um, I couldn't even pay for milk in the refrigerator. And I had two toddlers. So you can imagine how devastating that was. And so when I joined, I definitely didn't have extra money to put into my business. Look, she's already hooking people who have joined and maybe they're questioning it or thinking about joining and questioning it. Look, I didn't have any money to join. So I just put it on my credit card, even though I can't afford milk and have two kids to take care of. Her priorities were to get herself into debt at first to at this chance of maybe making money with Sensi. And she is a higher up, so she is one of the select few now making money in the company, but she has been with it for a very, very long time. So of course she's had the time to build herself up while there wasn't a whole lot of people in the company yet. Excuse my language, but how fucking disgusting. You have two kids and you're with your last line of credit, Sensi was on your mind? Like when you couldn't even afford milk? I scraped to get that kit. Um, I don't recommend charging your kit, but you know, if, if you're serious about making this a business, you know, um, people are going to make their decision. And that's what I did. I said, you know what, this is my last chance to really make a change and get things going um, to contribute to my family. So I'm, and then I made a promise to my husband that I will make that money back. Um, and then I went above and beyond, obviously. Right. So my follow-up system was very simple. In the very beginning is I literally would take all of my orders that were in each month and I would put them into an accordion file. And so if they ordered in April, they went into April. And then if they went into, they ordered in May, they went into May. And I literally would just um, pull out everybody that ordered the month before and just start calling them or texting them and saying, hey, how's your products? How do you like that? Do you need anything else? 
Now, since then, I've learned that um, statistically, people tend to order, uh, I think they said 70% of people order seven days after they get their first order. Seven days, you guys. So I missed out on a lot of reorders, right? Because I didn't know that. Um, but I was doing something and I still made it, right? I still built a business. So the key is to follow up some way, somehow, and within a, at least a month or so. If you're not following up, you're literally hurting yourself and your income because we have a consumable product. And once they buy from you, they can't get their Sensi products from anybody else. Well, they can get it from another consultant, but we don't want that, right? We don't want them to go to some other consultant to go buy their stuff. So when you think about it, how many customers do you have that has placed orders with you, but you haven't followed up? Mm, wouldn't you love that? Just buying a product that you thought you might like or wanted to try, and then you have somebody pestering you days, weeks, or maybe even months after, hey, do you want to buy some more? No thanks. Like when I go and buy something at the store, I don't have Target calling me, pestering me, asking me if I need to buy some more damn toothpaste. Like are those Scentsy products really even that worth it to have somebody pestering you constantly? Like how she said, calling, you know, emailing, messaging, whatever it might be. No thanks. And it's been at least a few weeks. Okay, those people, are if they fall in love with their products and they haven't heard from you, guess what's going to happen? They go to a vendor event and they see a Scentsy booth with bars galore and warmers galore and products galore. What are they going to do? Oh man, I really love that that blueberry cheesecake. I, I'm already go I only bought one. It's already gone, and she's got five sitting there. Guess what she's going to do? She's going to grab them, right? But if and but then if that if that um, consultant order um, that is at the event places the um, gives them the five bars, they have an opportunity to to snag your customer and make them their client if they follow up. But if all they do is just oh here's your five bars and then they never hear from them again, what's going to happen to that customer? They're never going to experience the loyalty of having their own Sensi consultant. This is so disgusting and predatory because we know they don't really give a shit whether you're enjoying or not enjoying the product or not. They just see you as a money bag, potentially. I get they're in debt trying to make money back from you know charging their kid on their credit card, uh, but that whole thing is so predatory. Their personal Sensi consultant. They're not gonna know what it's like to be able to um, not run out of their products. They're not know what it's gonna like. Uh, not gonna be like to have the customer care of. Oh, I really hated this scent, and I I only I only warmed one cube, but I can't stand it. Of being able to swap it out and get something they actually like for their money, which we can do if we follow up, right? Um, and the thing is, is if we don't follow up, we don't know if it's working properly. Uh, their warmer, their diffuser, whatever they bought. We don't know, again, if they hate this, the stuff they bought, um, which is so important because if they don't like it, they're not going to buy again, right? So um, it says I have a chat, but I don't see anything in the chat, which is weird. Here's um, me, Jess. Oh, hi. What's up? I had a hard time getting on. I'm so sorry. <laughs> But yeah, just like you were saying, I have a lot of, um, we just got back from an event in Mogendale and I have a lot of uh, reoccurring customers because of that, that very same thing. They have, either they've had um, a consultant and they don't follow up with them or they're no longer um, a consultant. So we have quite a few people up there that we um, drive up there too. You know, I'll get a couple orders and drive up, you know, so that's good. Your hair looks so cute like that, by the way. <laughs> I've never seen your hair back. It's so cute. I love it. <laughs> and I, P.S. Side note: I have to call you because I'm still waiting. I still need to hear about your Logan Dell thing. I'm so sorry. I, I need to talk to you. So yeah, I totally forgot. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I won't be calling you because I want to know. Okay. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Uh -huh. um, so we have the ability 
to build a clientele, meaning we can rely on orders every few weeks, every few months, whatever that their ordering cycle is or what, however, how much they buy. Now, a lot of people don't know this, especially if you're new, one cube in a wax bar is equivalent to about eight hours of fragrance, okay? There's eight hours in a, in a wax bar, right? So what is that, 64 hours? So if they are warming their, their wax every day, you can say, okay, they bought a six pack. I should, I've been doing this long enough. I should know this by heart, but I don't. Um, but okay, let's say they ordered six bars times eight cubes. That's 48 cubes, okay? And then we divide it by that by 24 hours. If they, if they, um, I'm sorry, six times eight equals 48. Yeah, that's 48 cubes. And then, um, we would divide that by the, like if they kept it on 24 hours, which we don't know if they do unless we ask. That's a follow-up call. That's a follow-up call you can do is say, hey, thank you for your first order. I'm so excited to be a, your personal Sensi consultant moving forward. Um, my, I'm curious, how often do you use your, I'm just using wax as an example because that's usually what people start with. And, and you could do this with all our consumable products. Um, you know, do you leave your warmers on 24 seven or do you, cause some people they'll turn them on only when they're home or only when they get home from a, you know, a nine hour shift at work and they put it on for two hours. So what is that? That's going to take their wax a long time to warm, right? So do you have a system of reminding them to turn their wax on to kind of help them move it along to see like, you know, let's, let's turn your wax on, let's turn your warmers on. So you can go through that because if they're not turning those warmers on, they're never going getting through their wax. Right. And she only says that they want you to go through their wax. So you have to repurchase it again, because if you're repurchasing it again and again and again, that is more money lining in their pockets. Why, if anybody ever tried to remind me to turn on or use a product that I bought my damn self with my damn money. Like, no, like that is so controlling and just weird. Why, why would you be like, are you remembering to turn on your wax and burn it? What if you're on vacation? What if you work a 12 hour shift? I'm not really seeing the logic with that one. Okay. So Though those are some, uh, that's a couple reasons why you uh, want to just follow up just to see how they're liking their stuff. Um, hi, Vanessa. Yay, you're here. Hi, Stephanie. Um, so it doesn't have to be for a sale. Okay. And it really shouldn't be the first time you call. Um, if you get one, great. But if you, the first time you call, the first time you call, it should be because you call because you care. I'm sneezing because I'm allergic to this BS that she sang. I want you to write that down. I call because I care or I text because I care, whatever, however you communicate with these people. You have to write down you call or text because you care, not just because you genuinely care. You have to force yourself to act like you care when actually you're just trying to line your pockets. Wow. How uh, great. Um, Because you want to make sure they're happy. You want to make sure they're satisfied. When um, in 2012, we launched our first body line, it was called Layers back then. It was a different formula um, and it wasn't as good as this formula that we have now. Now they, they hit it right on the nose, uh, bullseye, great formula. Um, but the first one had some issues. And so a lot of people had some allergic reactions to, to those, those um, products. And I remember calling to find out if this lady that bought some lotion from me at an event and just said, hey, I'm just kind of, I wasn't thinking about if, she, if she's got a reaction. I was thinking, does she like the smell? Because we have a chemistry. We may like the smell in the wax bar or when you're smelling the, um, the lotion. But once we put it on our body, the chemistry changes it. And they may not like the chemistry on them. Like they might say, hey, you smell really good. Is that scentsy? Yeah, it's actually this scent. It smells good on you, but their chemistry doesn't work, right? So when I made that follow-up call to find out if she liked the fragrance 
She goes, actually, I had a horrible response, uh, reaction to it. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. She's like, yeah, I only put it on my arms. Thank goodness. I was going to put it all over my body because it was a body cream. She's like, but I, I am um, highly allergic to things. So I wanted to be careful and just, just try a small area. And um, here's the thing, guys. I called like weeks later because I didn't have a good follow-up system then. And I could have fixed that a lot sooner. I could have been like, I'm so sorry. Would you like a refund? Would you like another product? Would you like a, um, you could do a credit if you don't, if you don't have the funds to refund them at the time, whatever. Um Wait, so I'm curious. I don't know a whole lot about Sensi. how she said, if you don't have the funds to refund them at the time. So is that saying like you like spent the money you already made from them and can't refund them back or since you can't refund them back so you have to give them a credit kind of confused so if any of you are sensi experts and know a little bit more about how it actually works with the logistics of like how they run like their refunds and all that i kind of like to know comment that below because i'm that kind of threw me off guard so if you want a refund you can't get a refund because your consultant already spent the money or can't refund you, I'm confused. Just to make it right, do you think she bought from me again? No, because she was turned off because she, I, she went two weeks with products that she didn't get to enjoy. She actually had a bad experience with it. She appreciated my phone call, but she was like, yeah, that's okay, thanks, bye, right? But if I would have called like a couple days after the event, I always say within 72 hours, you always wanna have a touch point with your event. Um, or after you drop off your order, um, I could have found out immediately and said, oh my gosh, don't use any more. I'm so sorry. You know, let me get you a credit for, you know, for something else, whatever. And I may have been able to save that client and, or that customer to turn into a client. Okay. So most of you, we're all grown adults, right? We're all over 18. We've had some type of a job before, right? Every type of career that you possibly have or had has customer care in it. I don't care what you do. Even, you know, some people are like, oh, I'm just a teacher. Well, guess what? You have to take care of those parents and those kids. You have to sell yourself as a teacher that you're a good teacher and that you care about the kids and you care about the parents, right? So it doesn't matter what you do. You are, you're also a salesperson, whether you want to call yourself that or not, um, you're selling yourself of if they're gonna stay with you. So customer care is so important in this business. It is the most important thing in this business. If you get people that feel like they're cared about, you're going to get long um, and loyal clients, okay? So um, a second way that I uh, moved into after the accordion file of just you know once a month checking in is, uh, there was, a, and I'll actually post this link with this video so you guys can watch that if you're more of a hands-on kind of person um, with like, you know, order forms and you like to see it and touch it. So this one is the client fo um, follow-up log. Um, it's just a little binder and each little slot has, um, this one is like orders that are done and they're delivered. So I just need to log them into, I have like a little binder that I keep everybody's orders in a little uh, protector sheet. So they, um, I have all their order forms in one spot and everything is alphabetized. So if, I, if Sarah calls me and says, hey, what did I order last September? I can pull Sarah's order out is faster than looking it up on the workstation and just, oh, September, oh, there it is, okay? So that's what I mean by log and file. Okay, so I log it. Um, oh, I'm sorry, that's not what I mean by log. That's what I mean by file. Logging is the next step, okay? I will log it into a spreadsheet. And this is where my um, current follow-up comes in. So let's put a pin on the log and move forward, okay? So I added that. Um, to be received, this is orders that I put. See how it says back order right here? These are orders that are on back order that I got the, the rest of the order, but their stuff isn't here yet. So I don't forget that this stuff is coming so I can stay up. I can keep my client updated. So I'm not just, they have no idea why it's been a month and they haven't gotten their stuff yet. 
it's so I know, oh, I need to make sure they realize, hey, thank you for your, you know, I'm so sorry it's on back order. But if it's still a week later, I can say, you know what, I just want to thank you so much for your patience. Thank you for hanging in there. Um, do you have any questions? Is there anything I can get you in the meantime? Um, and then, of course, back orders. This is just me. You don't have to do it. I always throw a little, little something in there for their weight. It could be a sample. It could be a scent circle that you got for free from your hostess rewards, it, a piece of candy, whatever it is, but just something to show them you value their time and their patience, but most of all, their business. Okay, if I ordered something and it was on back order and they sent me a piece of candy as a sorry, that is, I'm sorry, that is just <laughs> so tacky. Especially like this isn't coming from a company. This is coming from like in person. You don't know what the hell is in what. <laughs> like, I don't know. That's just kind of weird and tacky. Also, I just find all this so fascinating and interesting. They go through like this extent of this binder and all this organization. It's like, Sure, maybe for her, this is a really great system and it works because she's high up. She has a lot of clients, a lot of downline. You know, she has to stay organized. But for those people that are just joining, they're probably like, this makes no sense for me to do any of this. I don't have any clients. I'm struggling to build a downline. I'm not making any money. How realistic is any of this for the typical Sensi consultant? because they can go somewhere else, right? We all sell the same product. They can go to any one of us and get the same product. So the care, the customer care is what's gonna keep them coming to you. Over here is pending action. This one right here is, I need to um, get their payment. I need to get their order, but I, I started an order form because they said they wanna order, but they, you know, they'll be in touch with me next week or something. But it's so I don't forget to follow up with this person and before I close an order, because here's the thing, the worst thing, the worst thing is when we close an order that is especially free, free credit, right? I mean, free um, shipping. And then we forget that there's an order that needed to be put on that order. And now we have to pay shipping and, and they're expecting free shipping. If they're one of those clients that are used to getting free shipping, we have to eat that shipping, right? Because that's our bad. They told us that they were interested. So, there's also a good strategy that you might want to do is, um, hold on, let me show you. Um, hold on. Bear with me, bear with me. Oh, so there's like, a, you can make like a little spreadsheet and like write people's names down that, um, you know, add-ons for next order like if they're like okay I want to place this order now but I want to order this next time you can write yourself little notes so when you're placing your next order it reminds you oh call Sarah back and say hey I'm closing my next qualified party that's free shipping did you want to add that fragrance flower on there or um they said they're interested but they haven't told you what they want you just know you need to call Sarah and say hey I'm placing this order now um, and then if they don't place it, that's up to, that's their bad. And then they have to pay the shipping, right? Because they're not on the ball and to place their order when you're ready to give them that free shipping. All right, to enter and process. Um, this one, this is orders that I have everything. I'm just waiting to process it. So I have their credit card or I have their, you know, payment in some way. I just, in the, so then I pull all of them out and all I have to do is process that order. So they're all in one order, okay? Um, this one, I have need payment or order. So like I have a couple, um, so pending action, there might be, these are kind of the same thing, but I will maybe put this, like if I just, I know I need their payment, I'll put it in here. But if there's some other type of action I need, I'll put it in there. So like if it's something, not as simple as getting their payment. Um, pre-orders, I have a section. So I don't forget that I got a bunch of pre-orders <laughs> and I have them all ready to go. Um, you know, I the order form all written out, which you guys, you may not know this if you haven't written your, read your Scentsy standards. I'm also just confused as to why a lot of those were empty. Like, had she already pulled them out? 
Does she not have any pre-orders or any of what she was talking about there to back it up? Like that stuff is actually happening? I don't know. <laughs> but we are obligated to write out order forms by law, okay? And give a receipt to them by law. A lot of people, oh, I'm just placing it on my website or I'm just putting in the workstation, da, 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 da. Um, or my customer doesn't care. They don't need an order form. You have to make one out, okay? And we have to keep them for at least two years for records. So if you didn't know that and you've been working your business for however long and haven't been doing that, that's okay. Today, you can start, okay? So, um, but with pre-orders, it makes it so much easier when you have the order already written out and all you got to do, and then you can go into your workstation and enter all their information in. And all you got to do is enter in that LTO that just once it's launched, right? Um, that saves time. It saves effort. Um, you're welcome, Vanessa. Yay. I'm glad you know. It's, I, that's what these are for, is for you to learn something new every time you come on. Um, so... If you have them as if you have as much prepared before a, a limited time offer launch, then you don't have to risk as much worrying about like it's selling out or whatever. Um, and then my last part is pending response. So this is, uh, uh, to be honest with you, now that I'm looking at this, the, the, those three are kind of the same. Like um, maybe I know that I've sent them a text message and I'm waiting for them to say, yes, charge my card that I used last week or last time, or do you want an extra scent pack for your Scentsy buddy? And you don't know yet. So this one, like I can't process it until I get that order yet or something. Does that make sense? Um, and then this is the actual follow-up um, part. So two days follow-up after I delivered their order, I put those, I delivered their order and I put them in the two-day file. Okay, so two days from the date on the order form of delivery, I follow up. Then three weeks, if if I if they didn't place an order, obviously, right? But if they placed an order, then they're going to get another follow up after you deliver. But say they didn't place an order, then I'm going to follow up three weeks later, and then I'm going to follow, and then they're going to go into this file, and it's going to be a two month follow up. Okay, generally. Most people, if they are if they are using their products consistently, it's going to be very likely they're going to be ready to place an order within two to three months. Now, if at the two month mark they don't place an order, then I would just follow up once a month after that until they place an order. Okay. Wow. So it sounds like if you place an order once, you are gonna be pestered once a month after that until you place another one. You are not off the hook until you block their ass, basically, is what she just said. So yeah, it doesn't sound like anything I'd be interested in um, for most things or everything I buy. I'm not getting these crazy calls and texts saying I need to buy another one or am I ready to buy another one, you know? So. Um. Here's also a, a slot that when I sell um, join packets, I'm not sell, if I mail a join packet, I will, um, I will put like a list of people that I've mailed with the dates that I mailed them. So I remember to follow up with those too, because it's great you just pop them in the mail. But if you're not following up with a possible person, then it doesn't matter, right? Um, here's a, a, a pocket where I put like who my hosts are, if they, if they have orders as well. And then I always have a pocket of all like empty order forms so I can just pull them out and make up orders. I have a little slot for like pens and highlighters. And then um, this is like my passwords to all my, my computer stuff. Um, what is your suggestion on people we can continue to follow up with would they leave you on read or no response? Oh, <laughs> okay. That's a great question. So. If you see that they read it, this is my, this is what I tell everybody. I would follow up again within like a day or so. Most people, they don't mean to ignore you. And I, and Cindy's been with me long enough. She's heard me say this a million times, but this is my example. They're reading their text message and their kid spills the milk. <laughs> what happens? 
they put their phone down, then somebody else texts them or somebody else calls them and it gets pushes down and they just forget that you even text them. They fully intention, they have a full intention to call you back, text you back, tell you they want something, but they just forgot. And I will tell you, I, I can't, I actually can't tell you how many times that after the second or third follow-up, they're like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. I feel so bad. I've been meaning to connect with you. You would never catch me triple texting somebody for any sort of reason at all. Like, sorry, I think that's crazy. I Honestly, if you have genuine intentions to get back with somebody, I don't think it should take three, four, five follow-ups. You just look crazy at that point. Um, so I get like, people do, people do forget to reply. People will look at it and put their phone down and do whatever. But say somebody follows up again for a second time, you, I would say 99.9% .9 the second time around, people see that and they'll, if they reply, they'll reply. If they don't, they don't want to talk to you or they don't want to buy your stupid crap. Like, I don't know. I think that's really a lame excuse to pester the crap out of people. So you have to ask yourself, is there a reason why they're, they're ignoring you? Like, really, is there a reason you're not like trying to sell them crack <laughs> that's going to hurt them? You know what I mean? Like, you're not trying to sell them cancer. You're trying to sell them something that they enjoy. And if they can, here's the thing. They also, um, they feel bad when they can't afford to buy more stuff. So there's nothing wrong with just saying, hey, if you're not ready, um, I will touch base with you in a, another couple weeks, or you're welcome to contact me, you know, when you're ready for more. I just want to make sure you don't run out of your sensi with a smiley face and then set a reminder to touch base in another month or so. And um, there's also this, it's called a follow-up philosophy. If you followed up like more than five times with no response, Again, always assume it has nothing to do with you because unless you like call them a bad name or did something mean that they're ignoring you for a real reason, they're, it's not about you. And that's the thing is everybody feels like it's about us. It really isn't. People's lives are so busy. They've got enough crap going on. They're not thinking about their sensey person. I, 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 I wish they were, but they aren't. Or you could just take simply no for an answer. Sometimes no response is the best response. So I, in her saying, we're not trying to sell you crack, we're not trying to sell you cancer. Like, is that really appropriate to be saying like? <laughs> oh, here's what um, the philosophy is. You send them a text or a phone or voicemail and say, hey, my follow-up philosophy is to continue to follow up with you until you tell me to stop. My follow-up philosophy is to continue to follow up with you until you tell me to stop. Until then, I will touch base with you unless you touch base with me sooner. That is fucking nuts. So I'm not gonna stop until you tell me to stop. Who the hell is thinking this is all a great idea or a great philosophy? I'm not gonna stop until you tell me to stop. And they're telling people this. Oh my God, if anybody ever told me I'm not gonna bother you or I'm not gonna stop bothering you until you tell me to stop. Like in any sort of scenario or circumstance, that's predatory and honestly disgusting. That is genuinely disgusting. And there you have it y'all, Sensi at its absolute finest. Aren't some of those things she said? Typ it's typical MLM lingo. It's all the same essentially. And I'm really curious what y'all uh, have to say about this one because she said some really triggering things that definitely grinded my gears a bit. So let me know what y'all think in the comments. But thank you once again for watching another video. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. It means so, so much to me. And I hope y'all have a fabulous week. Thanks for watching.